As we hear God's word in scripture and join with Christ in his sacrifice of himself to the will of the Father, we invite you to worship with us in the celebration of the Mass. These are holy men who became friends of God, glorious heralds of divine truth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Cyril, monk, and Methodius, bishop. Cyril and Methodius. My brothers and sisters coming together as God's family, today let us take a moment first to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord's forgiveness. I
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlightened the Slavic peoples through the brothers St. Cyril and Methodius, grant that our hearts may grasp the words of your teaching and perfect us as a people of one accord in true faith and right confession. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When the Lord saw how great was man's wickedness on earth and how no desire that his heart conceived was ever anything but evil, he regretted that he had made man on the earth and his heart was grieved. So the Lord said, I will wipe out from the earth the men whom I have created and not only the men, but also the beast and the creeping things and the birds of the air for I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found favor with the Lord. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for you alone in this age have I found to be truly just. Of every clean animal, take with you seven pairs, a male and its mate, and of the unclean animals, one pair, a male and its mate. Likewise, of every clean bird of the air, seven pairs, a male and a female, and of all the unclean birds, one pair, a male and a female. Thus you will keep their issue alive over all the earth. Seven days from now, I will bring rain down on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And so I will wipe out from the surface of the earth every moving creature that I have made. Noah did just as the Lord had commanded him. As soon as the seven days were over, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The responsorial psalm, the Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord, the Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord, you sons of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The God of glory thunders, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. Jesus enjoined them, watch out, guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. They concluded among themselves that it was because they had no bread. When he became aware of this, he said to them, why do you conclude that it is because you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or comprehend? Are your hearts hardened? Do you not have eyes? Do you have eyes and not see, ears and not hear? 
And do you remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many wicker baskets full of fragments you picked up? They answered him, 12. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many full baskets of fragments did you pick up? They answered him, seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? The gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Cyril and Methodius. So if you're Polish or Czech, these are your saints. They are the ones that, that were sent to preach the gospel to the Slavic nations. And in fact, they created or perfected a written language, Cyrillic it's called, in order that they might be able to translate the scriptures into a written word and also to create um, a very stable language for liturgy. They created the rite, a Slavic rite in the Cyrillic that's even still used today in some ancient liturgies. It said that they were called to Rome. They're very successful in, in preaching the gospel. They called to Rome and um, uh, at first some of the prelates were kind of jealous, they said, or they had some concerns, they had liturgical concerns about what they were doing with the liturgy, you know, putting it into another language, all those kind of things. But the Pope was clear, he saw, saw through all the the, the stupid stuff, and he saw that what they did was really good. He confirmed the liturgy and promoted their work continually until they died. They lived in the 800s. But I kind of have a little connection with Cyril and Methodius only because I discovered St. Cyril's grave in Rome when I was studying there. I came upon it quite by accident. Um, and it's in, it's in a church that really has something to say about the work of being a missionary because they went into a place where Christ was not being proclaimed and they had to present the gospel in a convincing way. Now, we see today in the, in the scriptures that Jesus tells them, for the disciples are con the concerned, they got in the boat, we only have one loaf of bread, we're not gonna be able to make it, you know, we, gotta, we need to get some more food, there were 12 guys here, okay? 12 guys, one loaf of bread, that's not gonna do it. So they're concerned about their stomachs, they're concerned about the bread, Jesus, his mind is something much higher. Maybe he's thinking about what's happened recently. He says, watch out. He's teaching them, watch out. Guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And well, you know, they're thinking bread. Oh, well, he must be talking about bread or something. And he said, no, of course he was talking about the leaven being don't let the spirit of, of the Pharisees or the spirit of Herod get into your hearts like a leaven, like yeast. Yeast makes something grow. It, it, it kind of develops into something. And so don't let that get inside or it will create, a, in a sense, bad bread. It will create within you a bad spirit. Don't let that leaven get in. Remember, Jesus called us. He wanted us to go out and be the leaven, be the salt of the earth. He wants the power of his word to go out and leaven and, and create good bread in the world and create a spirit to be a flavoring of the world that brings about justice and peace and the love of God. But even the apostles had a trouble getting it. You know, he said, you're so, are your hearts hardened? You've been walking with me. You're right here with me. And they're still having trouble. So it, it kind of tells you some of the difficulties that missionaries have when they're presenting a whole new thing. The whole gospel of Jesus Christ is something brand new. But, this, but anyway, so we go back to Cyril's grave. I'm walking around. There's a church down from the, um, down from the Colosseum. You might not go there on a regular tour called San Clemente. It's a nice place to go because it's a very interesting church. First of all, it has a very interesting liturgical setup and some beautiful mosaics in there. You're quite surprised. It's also run by, um, I think, English Dominicans. So you can always find someone in there that speaks English. And so you go in, this beautiful church. But then you go down some stairs and you see the original basilica. So there was another basilica, equal of size, that was destroyed. I don't remember how. But they built the new one on top of it, okay? So now you're beginning to see the, the kind of the conundrum of Rome, okay? You're walking around at this level in modern Rome, okay? But when you go downstairs, you basically, they built this top, on top. So you, when you go down, you have kind of the full height almost of the original basilica underneath you. And you see the columns there, which they're using to support along with the walls. You can see the outline inside, you can go and see. And over the corner is the grave of St. Cyril. And you would think this great saint of the Slavic nation would be buried somewhere else, but he died in Rome, 
and there he's buried. So Cyril's buried there, I think, with Otis in uh, Poland or Czechoslovakia, somewhere over there. But he got, that's right, I said, what's Cyril doing here in Rome? But here he is buried in, the, in that basilica. But then you go down another set of stairs, okay? So now you're going deeper into Rome's history. And down at the bottom was a old, ancient, pagan Mithraic temple. A temple there, but to some pagan god. So what happened? Well, the Christians come along. Maybe someone that was part of that little cult converted. Maybe they owned the property it was on, who knows. But they then, on top of that, they built the basilica. Well, a small, probably a small church at first, eventually a larger church. But in a sense, Christianity prevailed. That was buried. On top of it now comes a uh, Christian church and then even a, another church above that. So the gospel was preached and proclaimed and the people of that little uh, probably sect turned, or at least some did turn to Christianity, and they converted and they built then a Christian church on top and built up from there. And that's kind of how the gospel spread. It goes into a place where Christ is not known and proclaims the gospel. It's heard, listened to, changes hearts, and then the church begins to grow. And so today we see kind of the difficulties of that, that not everybody gets it. And you have to have a message that's understood. It's so important we talk about evangelization. If we're going to evangelize the world. If we're going to evangelize our neighborhood or tr bring other people to Christ or try to get other people to see the, the joy of the gospel, we have to present it in a way that makes sense to them, in a way that makes sense that they understand. And sometimes you use highfalutin theology words, it doesn't work. The best witness, and we talked about this last week in our, our, bishop, our, sorry, our priest convocation. We've been talking about this at the bishop's level as well. You have to present the gospel in a way of a witness. You, in a sense, have to say, this Jesus, this is how I experienced Jesus in my life. This is what God has done for me through Jesus Christ. This is how I experienced the forgiveness of Christ. This is how I come to know the joy of the gospel and knowing that God saves me and promised me eternal life. God shows me how to face death with the hope of the resurrection. And that witness, that witness of how it lives in us becomes the first kind of way in which people can begin to understand because you're talking in human terms. You're talking about the living Christ within us. And so it begins to make sense. They tell me more. And then you can begin to, as Jesus said, kind of open the scriptures. Because Jesus kind of says, you know, and I said, it's kind of hard. I'm going to put my own spin on this today. He says, don't you have eyes to hear? What did you see? We've been all that bread. How much do we have left? Said, How many fragments did you pick up? Twelve. You know, and then we, we, did, we did it for the 4,000. How many did you, how many full baskets did you have? Well, we had seven. He goes, don't you understand? Don't you understand that there'll always be enough bread? God will always provide for those things that you need, that there are greater things to consider here. Don't get caught up. Don't get distracted by the, the regular, ordinary, mundane parts of life. We have to attend to them, but don't let them become so important that we forget the underlying support and help and guidance we get through prayer, through God's grace, through the sacraments, to help us live and actually confront and even maybe even overcome the problems of this world through the eyes and through our faith in Jesus Christ. And so today, let us remember the good work of Cyril Methodius, who preached the gospel and changed and, and converted a country, a world, a, a people. Let us remember poor Cyril in Rome, and maybe one day he'll get back over into Czechoslovakia or Poland somewhere, although churches are very you know, loath to give up their saints, but... If you want to find Cyril, he's in Rome at San Clemente. And if you do worse to visit San Clemente, it's a really beautiful little church and a great experience to visit. And, but also let us consider that we're called to be proclaimers of the gospel like them. And sometimes speaking to someone who ha doesn't have any faith at all, who's unchurched, to speak about these things is like speaking Greek to them because they've never even had any kind of formation in this ma manner. And so you have to speak, I think, more from the witness of how it expected our lives that begins to make them curious about what's going on. Or they see it in the way we live our lives. And they say, what's different about you? In so many words, why are you doing it this way? And then we can witness to Christ to them. 
Let us pray we have that missionary spirit of St. Cyril and Methodius, and that whatever we have to do, I mean, Cyril and Methodius, they worked hard to perfect a written language so they could write the scriptures in this language, so they could be read, and so that the, the, the people could pray in the language as well. They created everything that was needed to overcome those little barriers to understanding and to perpetuate the gospel into the future. Let us pray that we have the gospel in our heart in such a way that if someone asks us why we are a Christian, why we are a Catholic, we can in a few words say, I am a Catholic for this reason. And there'd be a convincing one that makes them ask the next question, tell me more. Or as the disciples said when they followed Jesus, he said, they heard him teach and they asked Jesus, where do you live? He said, come follow me and I'll show you. Let us, hopefully, we can be that kind of disciple in the world today and bring others to Christ through our witness and through our words, our actions, and through our willingness to witness to the love of Christ in our lives. Let us now take a moment to offer our prayers of petition. We pray, first of all, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and join his prayers in all the world's prayers for those who are in such desperate, a desperate need in Syria and Turkey, that God will continue to uh, move the world to open up all avenues of help to those in need. And we might continue to join, and if we cannot help physically, to join our prayers every day to bear some of the sadness in our own hearts that we might offer it up to God, that he might, through his grace and his power, move nations to help these people in such need in every way that we can. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are ill today and suffering, that God will continue to give them healing and loving caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all missionaries who go out to proclaim the good news, that God will inspire them with a patience and a confidence, but also a determination to continue to witness Christ to the world so that others might come to know the joy of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers we place before you. We pray them with confidence through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink, and blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Cyril and Methodius, and grant that these gifts may become the sign of a new humanity reconciled to you in loving charity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Cyril and Methodius, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of their holy lives, teach her by their words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to their prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, ho Holy Lord, God, are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another the sign of peace. peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Persons who are unable to receive the Eucharist are urged to unite themselves spiritually with Christ's sacrifice. Ask the Lord to make himself present with his grace and blessing. The following prayer, composed by St. Alphonsus Liguri in the 18th century, is a good model for your own prayer. O my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The disciples went forth and preached the gospel while the Lord worked with them, confirming the work through accompanying signs. Let us pray. O God, Father of all nations, who make us us sharers in the one bread and the one spirit and heirs of the eternal banquet, grant in your kindness on this feast day of St. Cyril and Methodius that the multitude of your children persevering in the same faith, may be united in building up the kingdom of justice and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Today's Mass has ended, but our mission continues. Strengthened by this Eucharistic celebration, we are sent forth to reflect Christ's self-giving love to all whom we encounter this day. If you would like to contact us or donate to our television ministry, please write us at Catholic Life Television, Post Office Box 2028, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70821, or email at television at diobr.org.